Hey, what's up everyone? So today we're going to be taking a look at Onion Knight. He's a specialist character who can do a little bit of everything. Similar to Cecil, Onion Knight has the ability to change jobs in the middle of combat, specializing in whatever his team needs at the moment. His default form is Onion Knight, which is his weakest form with no real specialty. To change jobs at first, you have to deal about 900 bravery damage as either physical or magical damage. So if you deal 900 physical damage, you change into the ninja class, which is basically an assassin type. Onion Knight becomes much faster, and he gains stronger melee attacks in this form. On the other hand, if you originally dealt 900 magic damage, you change into the Sage class, which is a marksman type. This gives you access to stronger spells, as well as letting Onion Knight glide as he casts. Once you're in one of these jobs, your X skill will allow you to change to the other job, but the cooldown is pretty long, so you kind of have to plan it out. Aside from that, Onion Knight has a few other things that make him unique that you'll want to be aware of. For one, his magic attacks deal more damage if they connect at max range. So the further away you are from the target, the more damage these projectiles will deal when they hit. So you'll often see Onion Knights in their Sage form hanging very far away from their opponents because they want to hit at max range. Also, regardless of form or if you're grounded or in the air, Onion Knight's dash attack is just a really quick dash move. There's no damage involved, it just gives him really high mobility. Speaking of mobility, Onion Knight has some pretty fast attacks. If you've seen him play before, you probably know his neutral ground and neutral aerial attacks where he just does a lot of quick attacks with his sword. You'll see it in action in a lot of these videos, but it's one of his more powerful attacks simply because of how fast the hitbox comes out. So the YouTuber we're going to look at here is named Swan Sky, according to Google Translate, I might have that wrong, but his channel is linked down below. He has tons of Onion Knight video, and I definitely recommend checking him out if you're interested. Alright, so let's get right into this first video here. Okay, so this matchup here is going to be Onion Knight, Squall, and Cloud on the blue team, and they're going to be going up against Warrior of Light, Vaughn, and Terra on the red team. So right away, just kind of looking at these characters here, blue team's got two strong melee attackers here in Squall and Cloud, whereas the red team's got Terra, who's a marksman character, and also Warrior of Light's got a pretty decent poke game, so does Vaughn also, so a couple little projectiles between the two of them. So blue team is definitely lacking on the marksman slash long range game, so Onion Knight is going to kind of focus on that in this game, he's going to kind of try to shore up that hole on his team and kind of be that sage type or just kind of throw out his projectiles. You also can kind of see that with his HP attack choice, which is going to be Meteor. And it works just like Terra's Meteor, if you're familiar with that. It's not quite as big, but it's the same concept. It's kind of a long-range AoE attack that is really good for finishing combos and just attacking enemies from a distance. So, jumping right into it here. Like I said, what you're going to kind of mostly see is Onion Knight just kind of hanging back with his projectiles, just kind of trying to poke at the enemies while his teammates do a lot of the dirty work there on the front lines. So right off the bat, he's kind of throwing out his fireball there, Warrior of Light soaks it up with the shield, and Onion Knight connects with his neutral aerial, the one I was talking about with all those quick hits, dealing a little bit of damage, but also getting knocked away by Vaughn. So he's going to move back into the battle here, he's focusing Terra right now, um, just kind of dashing around. He actually catches Vaughn off to the side, the two of them are kind of dueling here, both missing some of their attacks. He tries to throw out Meteor, but isn't quite fast enough. He catches Vaughn after a dash, though, hits him with that neutral aerial attack, able to build up a lot of bravery damage there on him, and dealing all that damage actually puts him in that ninja form now. So off off to the side while um, Onion Knight and Vaughn were dueling, looks like Cloud actually died, so Blue Team's already down to two bars. So now that he's in that ninja form, he's a little bit faster, he's going to kind of try to get some physical attacks in right there. But something I kind of want to point out here, so if you look on the screen in the minimap, it looks like Red Team's Vaughn and Warrior of Light are both focusing on Onion Knight and they're kind of rushing in to attack him. So something that Onion Knight has to deal with this, if you look at his X skills, he has Bindga, which is that red one, is the, his top X skill. And what that's going to do is anyone that's, you know, close to him within a certain range, whenever he uses that, it's going to immobilize them for a short period of time. So what you're going to see is he uses that right there, he catches Vaughn with it, who's now immobilized, and then immediately throws out that Meteor, picking up a lot of HP damage there on Vaughn, and if Warrior of Light was still in range, if he had committed to that chase, he would have got caught with it too and probably taken some HP damage as well. So that's a really good combo there for Onion Knight, and specifically so for him, just because whenever he's playing that Sage role, or that uh, Marksman role, unlike most Marksman characters, he doesn't really have any options to deal with close range melee attackers. So if someone's kind of hunting him down, Characters like uh, Terra have that slow-moving tornado, Yishtola has a couple of close-range attacks, but Onion Knight specifically, he just has long-range projectiles, so not really anything he can do to dissuade people from chasing him down. So, you know, Bind is a good X skill to kind of fill that gap and just kind of give him an option if someone's coming too close to throw that out and either let him escape or use his HP attack. Alright, so jumping right back into the action here, 
Warrior of Light's getting caught there by Squall in an attack, so Onion Knight immediately throws out his HP attack, dealing just a little bit of damage there. He catches Terra with a Bravery attack, and Vaughn actually catches him afterwards with an attack, which then leads to Cloud picking up uh, some HP damage and a kill there on Vaughn. So actually, not that bad of a situation for Onion Knight, even though he got attacked. He felt safe making that move on Terra because his teammates were surrounding him. So even though Vaughn charged in and was able to deal some HP damage, it kind of wasn't really worth it because Cloud was there to immediately follow up on it. Okay, so now Blue Team's got Alexander active, so we'll see if they can make anything happen with that. You see immediately, um, Onion Knight just switched to his Sage form, so now he's going to have the full extent of all of his projectiles here. So now you're going to kind of see what I was talking about earlier. He's kind of staying at a distance here. Right now he's throwing out his HP attack, just trying to connect with people. But he's going to kind of just stay away from the red team and just try to get that max range distance with his projectiles. You see he's just kind of gliding around with his attacks, kind of backing up and moving to the sides here. And just kind of chasing down the red team but staying at a distance. So he throws out that Meteor on Terra and misses, but you see Squall actually catches her in an um, attack chain there. So he's able to throw out the Meteor again and pick up a kill on her, bringing red team down to one health bar left. So once again he's just kind of throwing out some of his bravery attacks here while his teammates are kind of moving in. And so something I want to point out here, and it's just kind of a great move for a support role or a marksman character to do. So you see both Squall and Cloud are kind of double teaming. I think it's Vaughn over there on the side. Both of them are kind of attacking the same target. And if you look on the screen, you see number one, who is Warrior of Light, is kind of rushing in that direction. He's going to be trying to save Vaughn here. Warrior of Light's a character that can do that. He's got that X skill that can taunt enemies. And some of his attacks can just kind of disrupt people. So what Onion Knight's immediately going to do is just throw out his bravery attack to try and stop Warrior of Light from making it there in time. And what's going to kind of happen here is, even though Warrior of Light was probably a little too slow to interrupt it anyway, Onion Knight does hit him with his bravery attack, and you see his bravery go up, which means Warrior of Light got knocked away, and Squall was able to finish off his HP attack and pick up the kill there on Vaughn. So, um, pretty good performance there by the blue team. Nice support role play there by Onion Knight. This is just kind of a quick little match, but just kind of showcased a lot of what Onion Knight can do. You see most of his attacks there. And you can see just kind of like how Terra's Meteor is really impactful, Onion Knight's the same way if you play him as that role. It can be a really good HP attack for finishing combos and just picking up some guaranteed HP damage. So it's definitely a popular HP attack that Onion Knight can pick up. His projectile game is pretty strong, and especially against an enemy team like this who is a marksman, a specialist, and a vanguard character. So no assassins and no particularly fast melee characters which kind of seemed to be what give Sage Form Onion Knight the most trouble. So he was kind of free to do his thing here, was able to throw out his projectiles and just kind of rush in with his attacks whenever he needed to, and was just able to easily, you know, play his game. Okay, so taking a look at the second game here, you see the blue team is a little bit more balanced. We've got Warrior of Light as the Vanguard, an Emperor that can kind of play the Marksman role, which means Onion Knight's not going to need to be relied on to be that long distance, you know, support type character that he was in the last game. He's going to have a little bit more liberty here to play as the ninja and just kind of be the assassin character for his team. So just like in most other games, you see both teams here just kind of throwing out their long distance projectiles here, just kind of poking at the enemy and not committing too hard to anything. They want to just see if they can split up the enemy and put them in any bad position. So they're just kind of going ahead with that. You see Sephiroth that's trying to move in here on Onion Knight. Onion Knight's trying to keep him at bay with his projectiles and kind of dissuading him from going in. Warrior of Light's kind of moved in ahead of the team here, so it looked like Red Team was trying to focus on him. Titus kind of uses mobility to get around Onion Knight, though, and actually pick up a bravery attack there on him. But not too much, just a little skirmish going on there. So once again, Titus moves over to Onion Knight. Onion Knight shields his attack, and it actually knocks him right into Terra, so he's able to use his neutral aerial there. Um, Titus tried to use the Slice and Dice, but Emperor was actually there to interrupt it, so good watching out um, on his part, able to prevent Onion Knight from taking any HP damage there. So Onion Knight's kind of in a 2v1 situation here, he's kind of just dueling Titus and Terra here. They're getting the better of him here, but I just kind of want to point out one of the big benefits of Onion Knight. His attacks are so fast, especially this uh, turbo hit attack, that his neutral aerial. And so even though he's getting 2v1 here, Terra's moved up, so both Titus and Terra are in melee range. And one thing I kind of neglected to mention is that this turbo hit can shrug off some ma uh, magic attacks. So as he's doing this on Titus, you see Terra's actually hitting him too, but it's not interrupting him. So he's going to knock Titus away, and um, with his speed, he's able to kind of dash forward, catch Terra as she tries to dodge backwards, and catch her with an attack as well. So he's done enough damage here to switch into his ninja form. He's going to be a little bit more mobile. He catches Sephiroth dashing there and actually is able to connect with his turbo hit there. Now he's moving in after Titus here. His dash gauge is kind of running out, but he was able to connect with an attack. 
So Titus kind of just dodges around him and rushes away from him, um, not wanting to get into a fight there. And Red Team actually all uses their summon at the same time. So now they're going to have Shiva active, and Onion Knight's going to have to be a little careful not to just rush in and try to attack any of the Red members, or he'll get caught out by Shiva. So, like I said, he's kind of just trying to pick his part here. He tries to go after Terra while she's not focusing him, but she actually is able to turn around and knock him away. He still chases her down and is actually able to connect with a bravery attack on her as she tries to dash away. So once again, he's still not trying to dash into anything too quickly. He moves to um, the other side of the red team here. And once Shiva's attack finishes, he rushes in now, trying to um, find somebody to attack. So Titus tried to use his HP attack there and whiffed. So Onion Knight's going to use his HP attack here. And like I was saying, I just want to point out, it's just a really quick charge, um, melee range HP attack. It comes out really fast, so you're able to punish people who whiff attacks like that. So he's able to hit Titus there and deal a lot of HP damage. So he gets an attack off there on Terra. He tries to um, run out of the way of Shiva's attack, but he actually gets caught in it, so Titus is able to punish him with a bravery attack and break his bravery. So Onion Knight's moving in here. Titus throws out another slice and dice that's not going to connect. So Onion Knight's able to just really quickly throw out that sword and magic HP attack and pick up a kill there on Titus. Sephiroth whiffs when an attack there, so um, once again, Onion Knight's able to pick up some bravery damage on him. And so now he's just kind of moving away. Titus actually catches him from behind with a bravery attack. Everyone's just kind of skirmishing here. Everyone's really grouped up. He's trying to chase down Terra, who was trying to run away, and he did connect with her with an attack. But once again, got attacked by Titus. With Titus's really good mobility, he's really good at punishing characters in that kind of situation. So, Onion Knight's kind of just chasing down Sephiroth here, he connects with an attack on him, um, he trades with Titus there. He's going to see Terra just trying to use her Meteor HP attack, so he dodges out of the way really quickly. He does end up getting caught by Sephiroth here with his HP attack though, and suffering about 2000 HP damage. Looks like his teammates were summoning while that was all going on though, so now Blue Team is going to have Shiva on their side this time, and we'll see if they can make anything happen with it. So Onion Knights is kind of trying to move away from the red team here. Looks like my video should be up for a second. Okay, and um, he's actually going to use his X skill and change into the Sage form now. And I think the reasoning behind this is it's going to be easier to kind of combo with Shiva's attacks here. If anyone gets caught by anything, he can just really quickly throw out a projectile and try to build up a lot of that bravery. And if anyone gets too close, he still has his HP attack he can use. So he's throwing out the projectiles, and right there he just builds up 900 bravery off connecting with one projectile from a distance. So like I said, he can build up bravery really quickly in this form. He's kind of chasing after Sephiroth here. Sephiroth dodges away from that uh, Diamond Dust. So he's still going to stay in stage form here and just kind of throwing out his projectiles. He has to wait for his X skill to um, finish its cooldown. He's kind of just trying to stay at a distance from the red team because like I said in the last game, he doesn't have a lot of close range options in this stage form. So Sephiroth is actually able to rush in on him and connect with a bravery attack. So he's just kind of trying to glide around and keep an eye on Sephiroth. Sephiroth actually dashes in and um, Onion Knight was able to catch him with his sword magic and um, pick up a kill on Sephiroth. Titus was able to turn that around and connect with Slice and Dice on Onion Knight, so it was a one for one life trade. But it puts Red Team down to one life bar left, so pretty good um, trade there for the blue team. So as Onion Knight responds, he sees Sephiroth doing a long HP attack animation, was actually able to connect with a sword and magic on him during that. And Terra was close by, so he was able to deal HP damage to her as well. Looks like Sephiroth is uh, kind of knocking Onion Knight away here. So um, now that his X skill has the cooldown's finished, he's able to switch back into that ninja mode. So now he can kind of get back in people's faces and start throwing out that turbo attack. So something to point out here, and I've seen it a couple times so far in this match, but one of um, Onion Knight's teammates here must have a, an X skill that will slow opponents. Because you see this white kind of wispy circle around Sephiroth right in front of Onion Knight. That means that he's slowed down. So he's not going to be able to dash as fast. So Onion Knight notices this and you know he's in that ninja form which here he's got a lot of mobility. So he's going to just chase down Sephiroth here. Eventually he's going to catch him. You know there's not much Sephiroth can do about it. So what he's going to do he's going to last it. Just kind of throw out a bravery attack there to try and knock Onion Knight away. And you see him just kind of dodging around trying to avoid Onion Knight. But Onion Knight was able to just kind of get to the side of Sephiroth and throw out that sword and magic. Connecting with an HP attack and actually picking up the kill there on Sephiroth and actually getting all three of the kills here to win the game for the blue team. So a really nice match there by Onion Knight in particular. Uh, you saw kind of that mobility at work and what is so great about him when he's in that ninja form. He's a fantastic character for just getting in people's faces and you know disrupting them with his attacks and just kind of getting dodging around people and connecting with his HP attack. 
He's got a lot of mobility with that dash attack. You kind of saw him using that a little bit earlier in the match whenever he was dueling with Titus and Terra. And you can see all the great uses for that turbo hit and how powerful a move that is. It's also cool to see the versatility that Onion Knight has being able to switch back and forth between Sage and Ninja. Because you don't really lose anything whenever you switch from one to the other. You know, it's not like you built around being the ninja so you want to stay in that the whole match. You can definitely switch back and forth depending on the scenario. So, you know, going into that Sage form, if it's useful at the time, then absolutely go for it. You know, and you're not going to lose anything for that. The only thing is, you know, there's a pretty long cooldown on that X skill, so it's going to take you a while to switch back. But that definitely gives Onion Knight a lot of versatility. And, you know, kind of lets him pick whatever is going to be the strongest against the opponents at any specific time. Alright, so moving into our last matchup here, we've got the blue team, which is going to be Onion Knight, Sephiroth, and Kuja. And they're going to be going up against Ace, Cecil, and Lightning against the red team. So, similar to the first matchup here, blue team is lacking a marksman character, and the red team has one. So you're going to kind of expect Onion Knight to kind of fill in that gap here. Expect him to be in that Sage role and just kind of poke at the enemies with his projectiles. He's using the same HP attack here in this game, that Sword and Magic, so he'll have that available as well. So like I said, um, both teams just kind of throwing out their projectiles here. Red team actually has quite a lot of projectiles amongst their characters, so blue team's going to have to kind of watch out. Onion Knight did get caught right there by one of them. But he's just kind of dishing out some bravery damage. The teams are just kind of trading damage here with their projectiles. So he tries to use his um, mobility there. He actually gets caught by Ace with one of his really quick projectiles and gets his bravery broken by him. Yeah, he's gonna have to be careful because Ace has really fast projectiles, you just saw that one kind of whiz by. So it looks like the team's just kind of trade out on the summoning stone, red team got a little bit of the better end of it and they're a little bit closer to being able to summon, but that's not gonna be an issue quite yet. So looks like the teams are kind of skirmishing here, so Onion Knight was able to connect with a couple of his bravery attacks and kind of disrupt the enemy team, and he hit with enough to be able to go into that sage form. So now he's gonna have a little extra damage here. So it looks like the teams are, once again, just kind of throwing out some projectiles here. Nothing too crazy happening so far. Looks like Lightning actually caught Onion Knight using her speed with a bravery attack there. So it looks like Red Team's actually going to be able to summon Bahamut here. We'll see if they try to play a little bit more aggressively. Both teams have been playing pretty passive in this game. So we'll see if Blue Team's able to kind of evade the, the rush down here. So yeah, it looks like Red Team is trying to move in a little bit. Lightning's moving towards Onion Knight, but he was able to hit her with a bravery attack and just kind of keep her away. He's doing a good job of keeping the enemy away by just using his bravery attacks here. So just kind of dodging away from Bahamut's attacks here. Looks like Kuja actually connected with a bravery attack there on Lightning. Onion Knight tried to follow up with a sword and magic to deal some HP damage, but he was unfortunately missed, and Cecil was actually there to uh, punish him for that and actually deal some damage to Onion Knight. So now he's able to kind of use that glide property of the Sage to just keep shooting out projectiles and dodging away from Bahamut's attacks at the same time. And it looks like he's actually going to go ahead and switch to that ninja form. I guess he just feels a little more comfortable on that right now. He thinks that's going to be more impactful for his team. Maybe now they want to try to get a little bit more aggressively. They haven't been aggressive all game, so we'll see if he can make anything happen here. So it looks like Cecil was kind of focusing on someone else. He actually just, Onion Knight was able to just dash in and hit him with that sword and magic, dealing some HP damage there. He tries to move in on Ace, but Ace really quickly was able to um, hit with a, a bravery attack. But as Ace was using his um, Tower Laser HP attack, Onion Knight was able to move in and deal some HP damage. It has a really long attack animation, so he was able to leverage that. So it looks like Red Team's down to one health bar left. So I just want to point out one of the nice properties of the Sword and Magic attack. So Onion Knight has moved up towards Ace, who has just used a bravery attack. It looks like Ace has instinctively started shielding. He's going to notice that Onion Knight's trying to hit him with an HP attack, so he's going to dodge out of the way, thinking it's going to avoid it. But the fact that you can charge the Sword and Magic HP attack means that Onion Knight's going to wait out the dodge, and then as soon as Ace you know, is stuck at that ending lag of the dodge, he's going to connect with that HP attack and deal some good damage here on Ace. So you see right there, he connects with him after he tries to dodge, dodge away. Now, that took a little bit of time, so Lightning was actually able to wall rush Onion Knight and follow up with an HP attack. So, you know, it was kind of a trade on HP damage there. But I would say it's a positive trade for the blue team just because red team only has one health bar left. So blue team's trying to summon, Onion Knight was trying to help out with that, but Ace actually caught him as he was trying to do that and was able to combo with a couple of bravery attacks on him, dropping Onion Knight's bravery pretty low here. But his teammates were able to summon Ramu here, so we'll see if they're able to finish this game off and play a little aggressively here now that they have the summon to help them out. Onion Knight just rushes straight towards Ace here. Ace kind of tries to dodge away, but Onion Knight was able to connect with that turbo hit and actually deal some good bravery damage here. He's got enough bravery now to pick up a kill on Ace or Cecil if the opportunity arises. And as I say that, 
Ace was trying to throw out that tower laser attack there. Like I said, it has a really long attack animation. So with his speed, Onion Knight was able to just run right over to him, connect with his HP attack, and finish the game there. And you saw Kujo was right there as well. If Onion Knight wasn't able to make it in time, Kujo was definitely going to finish off the game as well. So Ace took kind of an unnecessary risk there and um, allowed Blue Team to rush in and finish off the game there with the mobility that they had. So I wanted to highlight this game specifically because I think it does a good job of showing the versatility of Onion Knight. So in the first half of the match, you know, he was playing that marksman role, which is kind of what you would expect given the lineup of the red team, since they have a marksman and ace. So he kind of plays that role and he's able to kind of disrupt the enemies and help his teammates to succeed. But he switched to that ninja role, I think, because he wasn't being as impactful as he wanted to be with his sage form. And I think he thought that that mobility of the ninja form would actually help his team out more, which it ended up doing because I guess maybe he noticed the long attack animations because Ace had tower laser and you know he was able to just notice all of these opportunities that he was going to be able to use his mobility to pick up bravery damage and HP damage. So it's you know really helpful to have that option you know he can be in that sage form fill that role let the red team you know get nervous about his projectiles and start trying to play around them and then immediately just you know at the press of a button switch to a completely different play style catch the red team completely off guard and use that mobility to kind of um, surprise them. You know, they weren't expecting him to be able to just run in and do damage. They thought he was going to be hanging back and using projectiles. So that is one of the biggest benefits I think that the Onion Knight has, is that he can really quickly switch between a, you know, a pretty good marksman character or a pretty good assassin character. So I definitely think his speed and his versatility are the two biggest factors in Onion Knight being a really strong character. Not to mention he has pretty viable HP attacks. I don't think he really has any that are terrible so that's a good thing for him too you know meteor will always be a strong hp attack because it's such a good combo attack and then that sword magic is it's a lot like bart's samurai attack like i talked about before in his video but having that chargeable property and also just having that snap you know quick hp attack if you want it that way having both of those as an option is really powerful because of his versatility i don't really can't really think of a specific team composition that Onion Knight fits in because you know like i said he can fit that marksman role he can fit that assassin role kind of whatever you need him to do he can do so he's a pretty good character to just kind of fill in a gap in your team. You know, if you have a really strong duo, um, he can kind of fill that third role. Kind of like I said about Vaughn in his video. Just having that versatility allows him to do so many different things. He can really help out any team situation. So if you want to see more Onion Knight action, like I said, the uh, YouTuber we use here, he's got a ton of Onion Knight videos, over 100. So definitely check out his channel down below if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. I will see you guys again next Friday for another video. Have a good one.